on Thursday, the uh, 16th of July. Uh, is it the 16th? Uh, anyway, I might get the date wrong. Um, today, earlier today, a report came out from the government's national food strategy about the proposed sugar tax. Uh, let me rip this apart because I'm going to do one little bit to address the problem of obesity in the general public. First of all, um, you, you know who I am. I'm a personal trainer, the only doctor qualified personal trainer in the UK. And in the last hour, we've just finished a, a live streamed aerobics class across the internet. I do demand about 9 p.m. for the simple reason for mums, it's the only time they get to exercise because the kids are in bed. Now, uh, this, uh, this report does not address the number one cause of obesity, nor an, and its, and its um, proposal of a sugar tax or a salt tax will make the number one cause of obesity worse. The number one cause of obesity is not exercising too much. It's not exercising too little. I'm going to tell you what it is in a minute, but a while ago, back in 2008, I wrote a blog about this and I was absolutely pasted about what I wrote. Min even government ministers were having a go at me. But in 2005, 2015 I should say, the, the charity called the Fabian Society released their report called Hungry for Change and they confirmed absolutely everything I wrote. I proved to be right in the long run. And the thing here is, this report from the National Food Strategy does not address this issue. The number one cause of obesity is not exercising too little. It is not eating too much. It's poverty. Okay? That is the reason. And the sugar tax and the salt tax plans to add at least another £30 a week to the average family's eat, uh, food bill. That's not going to help. Now, I can hear you all saying, why on earth is, is obesity a disease of poverty? Let me explain. There are seven reasons for this. Number one, food that is high in fat and low in nutritional value is mass produced and cheap. Food that is high in nutritional value and low in fat is hand produced and expensive. The poor can't afford it. Compare the price of a Big Mac to a salad. There you go. People who are cash poor tend to be time poor. They haven't got time to cook from fresh, although there are exceptions. You ask a single mother of four to make a, a, a cook from fresh, you know, it's unlikely to happen, although there are exceptions. People, a lot of people out there can only afford to have one meal a day. If you only have one meal a day, guess what happens? The body will slow down its metabolism and store everything it can as fat. Okay, so that doesn't help. People who are cash poor tend to be time poor. They haven't got time to cook from fresh. The other thing is, if they're, if they're time poor, they haven't got time to have half an hour per meal. Okay, so what's going to happen is they'll wolf down their food. It takes the brain 20 minutes to register that you've eaten. So what happens is, you're going to wolf down some more food. What happens if that's high fat food? With the greatest of respect to people out there, a lot of people don't know what's good and what's bad for them. So I welcome the, re the reintroduction of home economics in schools. Great, that should, have been, that should never have been abolished. And if I had my way, home economics would be mandatory at the age from age of 11 to 16 in school. That's if I had my way. So people would know how to cook a, uh, a nutritious meal from an early age. That would be mandatory. But the other thing here is, and reason number seven, is that a lot of people can't afford expensive gym and personal trainers. This is what makes me shudder with anger when I see some personal trainers charge ridiculous amounts of money. Those people who need them can't afford them. That's why I don't charge, I only charge £1.50 a day for my flagship programme. Okay, It's cheap, but other people charge ridiculous amounts of money and I'm constantly being criticised for this. The other thing that happens is, the eighth reason why obesity is a disease of poverty, is that consider the plight of the working mother nowadays. Um, minimum wage is £8.72 an hour. When you go on maternity leave, your income halves, in some cases worse. Gross pay is about £360 something. After taxes, that works at £275.68. Childcare per child works out at £225 per child. Therefore, a mother takes home £50.68 a week. Not a lot. As a result, a lot of mums are dependent on tax credits to make ends meet and child benefit for that matter. To make matters worse, inflation is 3%, wage rise is 1%. So basically your wages are shrinking every year. To make matters worse,
So therefore, the sugar tax is not going to do very much, much about that unless they address the number one issue of obesity, which is poverty. This is why I get my students on three to five streams of income. I encourage them to do that. It's not that difficult to do. So please watch this video. OK, listen to what I've said and I welcome your comments below. I will be setting up a parliamentary petition to oppose the sugar tax because it's one of the stupidest things they could think of, of being in. Thank you very much for your time. See you soon. Bye bye.